Did you know that the Gouldian finch is an Australian native bird? It's really tiny, it's about 10 centimetres tall. I'm going to start out by talking about the colours and then I'm going to show you how to keep the yellow pure. So this particular Gouldian finch has three primary colours. It has a massive yellow, a primary red, a primary blue, and then it's got a secondary colour here, which is green. I'm going to use three colours to create that. I'm just going to show you those three colours on the colour wheel. It helps work out um, how those colours relate to each other. I've got pyrrole red for the really bright red on the bird's head. I've got cadmium yellow light. For the blue, I'm going to use cobalt turquoise light because it's got that really beautiful green blue uh, tone to it. Yellow, the turquoise and the pyrrole red over there. Got a sheet of ash watercolour paper. I like to tape all four edges. So in order to draw the bird, I've broken it down into three circles, a round circle for the head, an egg-shaped circle for the breast, and then another egg-shaped circle for the body. And the whole time I'm checking that things line up with each other. I'm checking that the beak lines up with the eye. Where does the eye occur in terms of the beak? Where does the head in occur in terms of the legs? That sort of thing. So to keep the yellow section of the bird beautiful and clean, I'm going to paint the yellow first. I'm going to paint the breast first and then I'm also going to add some yellow up here that I'll glaze over with my turquoise. I also need to think about how to slightly darken the areas where the breast goes in here and it's make it slightly darker at the base of the bird as well to give it some extra form. So I'm going to add a little bit of red and a little bit of the blue in order to make a lovely grey. So I'm going to start with that clean yellow down here. Oh, that's better. So I'll keep that brush for that purpose. I'm going to get a really small brush and add a small amount of turquoise and even smaller amount of red and just grey down the green, a tiny bit more red here. So I'm going to put water there where it comes out and water over here where it puffs right out. That brush has got a little bit of pink on it. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then I can come in with the yellow right up to that sector there. And I know it's a female because of the beautiful red beak. She was actually feeding her babies at this time. I'm just going to grab that little brush full of water and I want to soften a little bit of water, the yellow, into the white. Just that tiny bit. It's picking up lots of colour as I'm doing that. So that's why I'm washing it. A little hint of yellow there. And it has a breast mark there as well. So put a teensy bit of yellow there, teensy bit to indicate there's a breast mark. Keep washing it off because this is the white section. Soften that. Now into that section while it's lovely and wet, I'm going to put a tiny bit of this slightly neutralized yellowy green. Goes in there, maybe a tiny bit in there as well. In the section of the breast. And then a tiny bit down here too. I'm going to go back to my water brush, soften off this edge a little, trying to make the bird look a little bit soft and fluffy on that edge. I also want to incorporate that greeny colour, that's nicely incorporated, that goes up there, that's Good. Okay, now I'll do the other side. 
the water is still sitting there. You can just see it. And I'm going to top it up because it took me a couple of minutes to paint that side. And then I'm using my brush stroke to enhance that look. I'm going to leave a little space there and again just using brush strokes that suggest round shapes. Just leave that little space for now. It's easy to cover later, really easy to cover. But while I've got this paint that's wet, I'm just going to soften this edge. Just water, nothing else. right up into there. Oops. Just soften. Right, these yellow feathers come out right out to the edge, they go fluff, 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 like that. And then the base of it is a little bit of tone, a little bit of tone. Tone in there, tone down. Here and especially down there. So I'm going to let that completely dry and not paint anything near it until it's dry and that's how I'm going to protect my yellow. The other thing that I wanted to do was paint There's another little hair in there. Right, that one, that green. Everywhere I can see the green, I'm putting an underpainting of yellow. There's some little fluffy bits that stick out across the top there. And into that will go this pie roll red. little tiny edgy bits. It's not at all straight, it's all fluffy. And then it comes down and it gets quite dark next to the beak. Oopsie. A little bit more water. With that same lovely grey and a circle and a lovely highlight. Puddle of turquoise down here. And 
nice and runny. A little bit more water, I think. Nice and runny. And it's light there and it's dark there. So I'm going to get a little bit of water to put at the top of her head. Bring it down here. Comes down around the red, gets a bit thinner there. And it's definitely lighter up here. And then I'm going to glaze it over the yellow. And uh, just going to lift off some off there because even though I put that water on, it's still a little bit dark and just glazing that out. And it's producing a really pretty green, so that's nice. And I'm just going to use the soft end of my mop to bring out little tiny feathery marks. Same over on this side, little tiny strokes to get, suggest feathery marks there. Uh, more blue down here. It's quite a solid blue here and on the tail. It's actually kind of dark down there, so I think I'll include some of this grayed off green to sort of soften and darken a tiny bit. So I might mix up a little bit of that red with turquoise, come in with a gray color. So it's quite dark under there. And there's a bit of blue, so I think I'll go back into the turquoise. Just bring that color down to give the breast a little bit of definition and a little bit of shadow where it comes down into here. Tiny bit of more color to there. And I'm just going to puff her out just a little bit more. This is quite defined here and here and over here this here switch to my water again just to add more definition there and that's better and that's quite good this blue could be darker and the eye needs to be darker. So back to my little tiny liner brush. A little bit of red. A little bit of turquoise. And create that beautiful grey again. Going to the bluer side. Because I love that colour. And then I'm going to delicately paint around that same little highlight and just darken the eye just that little bit, leaving a tiny little bit of colour and darken the hair here. Soften off, soften off. I'm leaving little sparkly white bits that are so easily covered later. There's a tiny bit of redness on her beak that I didn't do on the top beak. Comes down like that. It's quite dark there. Soften. Add a little bit of red. Red 
streak in, and streak in, and streak over to here, 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 down to the left. Soften. Ah, this blue needs to be darker. So I'm going to grab some of that grey turquoise and put it a little bit under here. Oh, there you money. A little bit under here. into the beak so I just stopped the run. Soften out that way, that way. Oh, the eye is lovely and dark and she's really got a lovely blue um, bulge there so that's quite nice. This is just a touch too dark so I'm going to get a flat brush in a suggestion of detail on the branch, highlight on the top, a little bit of water on the bottom, and then a little bit of colour under here. Just little tiny touches. Because I've got all these lovely colours on my palette and that's so the time to sign and Marion. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you got anything out of the video please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it.